Gunners Park has been a site of human occupation for at least 10,000 years with evidence of Mesolithic occupation, Roman salt working and Iron Age settlement. Sheep and cattle grazed the marsh until its purchase in 1849 by the Board of Ordnance when the land became an experimental and practice artillery range. From 1859 to 1940 the site was used by the School of Gunnery and later the Coast Artillery School for training primarily Royal Artillery servicemen. During the 1840s Shoebury Ness was chosen as a new testing and practice site due to increasing difficulties at the Royal Artillery Ranges at Woolwich. From 1859 Shoebury Ness became a permanent military base. The Shoebury Garrison headquarters was disbanded in 1976 and the site was sold for development in 2000. Many of the military structures on the sea wall and in Gunners Park are now listed whilst the area including the Iron Age earthworks is a scheduled monument. Several of the surviving buildings have been converted into new homes and businesses and are also listed structures. Shrewbury Garrison is a unique area of national importance. Its history, archaeology and historic buildings and its unique setting overlooking the mouth of the Thames estuary with adjacent beaches, parkland and nature reserves make it a fascinating area to explore. Located on slightly raised land at the mouth of the Thames estuary, Shrewbury has had strategic importance since prehistoric times. The heavy quick firing battery was built in 1899 and contained stores and lifts on the ground floor and on the top four coast artillery guns were mounted. This is the 9.2 inch gun pit and is facing out to sea. Constructed in the 1800s, the pit mounted a 9 inch high angle rifled muzzle loading gun. In 1929, the gun pit was modified to take a 9.2 inch Mark 7 gun, forming part of the Thames and Medway coast defences during the 1930s. In 1941, it was removed to Dover where it was named Shoebury Ness. The pit floor was raised in the 1970s to accommodate climactic chambers for ammunition waiting to be fired at long ranges from guns positioned out on the sands. The brick building in front comprises two experimental casemates built in 1872 to 1873. These are covered placements where the gun is inside shooting out through an embrasure. The guns used here were a 12.5 inch 38 ton and a 12 inch 25 ton rifle muzzle loading gun. Their purpose was for coast defence, experimenting to develop a casemate for operational use. In 1881 the right casemate, as you look out to sea, was modified to mount the new 12 inch breech loading gun. Extended out into the Thames, Barge Pier, built in 1909 to 1910, was used for loading armaments and stores onto and off from vessels of the War Department fleet until the early 1950s. The railway line, which you can see on the aerial photograph, is crossing the garrison and it ran from Barge Pier, allowing guns and munitions to be offloaded and transported across the site. Adjacent to Barge Pier, which you can see jutting out into the water is Gog's Berth, built in 1877. It was used for landing railway mounted guns during the late 1800s. Later modified, Gog's Berth remained in use for many years for the dumb barges Magog and Gog, hence the name. A dumb barge is a long, large, usually flat bottom vessel used for the transport of freight.
The old ranges were originally used for testing various new and innovative ordnance, mountings, etc. for the Royal Navy and the Army, including rockets, shrapnel shell, the revolutionary change from smoothbore to rifled artillery, the modern steel breech loading guns, quick firing guns, and latterly the introduction of cordite and high explosive, which, after hundreds of years, replaced gunpowder. The garrison's military heritage is now nationally recognised and protected. Many of its surviving buildings are listed buildings, and much of the area within the prehistoric ramparts, as well as the Cold War defence boom and the Mulberry Harbour, are protected as scheduled monuments. Development at the garrison is bringing the whole area back to life. New buildings mostly reflect architectural themes of the historic buildings without slavishly copying past designs. New open spaces, views, focal points and parkland are being created for the public along with new access to beaches and sea walls.